So now it's my pleasure to introduce our keynote. Anne DeMarle, she's the director of the Emergent Media Center and the associate dean of Emergent Media. So Anne created and directed the multimedia graphic design degree and two founding degrees in game development, electronic games and interactive development and game programming. She had an idea that game development was more than a passing fad, the vision to create a plan for the success of games in the academic space, the persuasiveness to convince the college to take a chance on this forward thinking idea. I met Anne just about 10 years ago today, actually. And it was a horrible phone interview. <laughs> and she told me that. It's, which is great, because most times when you have a horrible phone interview, uh, you don't hear about it. In fact, you don't hear from them again. <laughs> it still amazes me that she asked me to come out to meet face to face with the search committee. I thought I was sunk. So that should be a lesson to you seniors. Prepare and don't give up. I am eternally grateful that she did invite me to interview because it gave me the opportunity to join this incredible team at Champlain College and build a little piece of history in the space of academic game media and despite, and despite a few more gray hairs, not too many, right here, um, I've had a ton of fun. So without further ado, Anne DeMarle. Hello? Ooh. <laughs> That'll wake me up. She's right. She had a lousy phone interview. <laughs> she had a great resume. And uh, when we brought her to campus, um, she did, as could be expected for most people, interview. But what really made the difference in, in my thinking about Amanda is I was uh, leading a teen camp. And they were all in, in the bottom classrooms in the Ireland building and the way she interacted with the students, I could see that she cared. And um, that's what made the difference. Um, so I am honored to be here. Actually, when Amanda asked me, I started crying. <laughs> um, and when, uh, I might even start crying tonight just because I'm pretty uh, jet lagged. <laughs> so, <laughs> So let me start. Um, first of all, I do want to thank our guests uh, from the industry and the parents and family members who are here tonight and our colleagues from Champlain. Uh, and congratulations to all the students. Amanda just um, really said what you've done in four years. First of all, this is a really difficult school to get into for game pro game, our game programs. And you made that first gate, and I, I bet you can still look back on your freshman year and think how you couldn't even find the bathroom or the library. But instead, you've worked your way through and you've bonded with your, your, um, uh, the other people in your class, and you've gone on to create great stuff. Um, and you're about to do something even bigger now. I'd also really like to thank the college. Uh, Champlain is a really special place. And I'd like to thank the administration. There's been three administrations I've worked under now who've all supported this program, um, all different, all unique, all innovative. And uh, the game faculty, uh, some of them I've worked side by side on other projects and some of um, I've just gotten to know through their own work. And of course, Amanda, uh, she gets a lot of credit for um, the quality of this program. And one person I think we really need to thank is someone who I brought to GDC right away when I started the program, because I realized Champlain wouldn't have a chance if we didn't connect to industry, and that's Daphne Walker. If we could give her a... First trip was 2005 to GDC, maybe? Yeah. Um, and she's just done great from saying wow to really knowing what to do. And also, our campus and faculty in Montreal, which really makes this program unique. So, um, I'd like to take you back. 
um, in time. And, and I would like to take you forward in this talk, and I'm going to try and keep it brief. Um, when I grew up, a lot of board games. I had a lot of board games. That's what I knew really well. And I started making games when I uh, became a special education aide right out of I was, I was the age of most of these students in this room. I was right out of college. And I realized that games were an incredible way to engage um, children in their learning, to give them reward systems that worked. Um, and I, I always think in games now. I think about rewards and how you balance things and um, how you don't really have to keep iterating. And you're about to start on your next quest. Um, you've accomplished this one. We'll see the results tonight. You've reached your goals. But I thought I'd look back and say, how did we get here and show you my top 10 list that I've discovered? Um, I've just come back from Shanghai. I got in at 10 o'clock last night. I think in the last 24 hours, I've gotten six hours sleep altogether. Um, this is Shanghai. It's an amazing place. We have a new program there. Here's the Apple Store perfectly positioned. I went in, of course, and looked at all those fancy watches. Uh, I didn't buy one. I thought about it, but I didn't buy it. Instead, I went onto the phones, and I started playing all the games in Chinese, and I realized I couldn't play them as well if I didn't know what I was doing because I couldn't read the words. Uh, but I kept playing anyway and just kept failing. I met a lot of cool people. This guy here, his name's Mao. You can follow him on Twitter. He's got a million, um, he's got a million follower, followers in the world. He's never left China. But he is the most connected person I know. And he's working at a company where they have a new iPhone app. And it's connected to um, a blog kind of site for literature. He reads, his book was covered with, his desk was covered with books. This is a new accelerator space. There's about 30 to 50 accelerator spaces in Shanghai itself doing all sorts of wonderful technical things. A lot of iPhones, a lot of, uh, they had a hacker space, they had a maker space. Here's some of the products you can see on the, uh, on, this is all fresh photos. Huge interactive displays, I love this. This is in the subway. It's capturing your image as you go by and digitizing it. Also, incredible art. This was a video installation. Those are videos, and they're about uh, 10 feet tall. And they were all about the people of China, and they were showing uh, these different comparisons in life. So my first uh, rule, I don't know if it's a rule or a level, but the first rule, I think, might be be fascinated by other people's journeys. It's a really important thing. We can get so wrapped up in what we're doing, we forget to look outside. And if we don't look outside, we don't learn anything new. And we can't really see what path we're going on. I'm going to take you back to 2003. So this is the 10th anniversary, but it was 2003 that we first started this program. I got so confused. I was like, I've been married 10 years. It couldn't be 10 year anniversary because I started the program before that, but Amanda clarified it was the first graduating class. But 2003 was the first time that the uh, game degree started. So I think a lot of people in this room, can you remember how old you were? I bet you there were a lot of nine-year-olds in this room. <laughs> Am I right? Nine, eight, 10, 11, someplace in there? So back then, I led a program called Multimedia and Graphic Design. It had 300 students in it. And those students were very tech savvy, and they loved creating, they loved animations, and of course, they were into video games. And I started uh, another thing called the Governor's Institute in Information Technology for Teens. And there were fantastic artists. In fact, this is one of our first GIV students. And now she's graduated from our degree. And she is a concept artist in the game industry. And I had a lot of kids, even though it was an IT, what we did is we opened up these labs. And they, inter they um, connected all the computers. And they were playing all these space games. And I wasn't really sure what game they were playing. But I'd watch and I'd talk to them all and see what was going on. And I could see that uh, games weren't what people were saying. And back then, people were saying that the gamers were um, isolated, and they were um, violent, and they had all these 
um, preconceptions. But what I found from these students was that they were really connected. In fact, when um, Governor Dean ran for um, president, they made sure we got downtown for his opening announcement. So I thought, wow, these guys got something together. So my second uh, rule is listen to your audience. It's easy when you first come in or when you're a fine artist to say I'm doing it from my soul or I'm doing it from my art. Uh, but I think when we're in this kind of industry, first we have to listen to who our audience is. What, what are they looking at? What are they interested in? What are they thinking? It doesn't mean uh, we deliver it that way. In fact, um, I was an Apple Distinguished Educator, and Jonathan Ives is the great designer behind Apple, and he said he, said he hated, um, he hated um, uh, what's it called? Um, studies, I forgot what it's called, where you would uh, market, market studies. He hated them. He said, they don't know what they like until they have it. He said, first you have to create it and then you can see if they like it. So listen to your audience. At that time, there were some pretty famous game characters. There was Laura Croft, there was Ra Racket and Clank, there was Zelda and Mario, and of course, one of my favorites, Sonic. <laughs> and the games, very popular then, were The Sims. Will Wright said about The Sims that most of the players spent their time in the inventory because they were trying to learn the language of the games before they started playing it. So The Sims, and of course, Halo. Everybody loved Halo. Um, it made, it, it made <laughs> fortunes. And then the controversial one was Grand Theft Auto. I don't know how many times I had to defend Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> the platforms, Windows, of course, it wasn't really on the Mac yet, and I'm an Apple Distinguished Educator, but it wasn't on the Mac yet. Xbox, Nintendo GameCube, and Game Boy, Sony PlayStation, and the PlayStation Portable were all the systems we had in 2003. The seventh generation came out right after that with the Xbox 360 and finally the Nintendo Wii. I remember being in Montreal for the Montreal Game Summit, and I'm in this audience of a, maybe a thousand, uh, and um, they, Nintendo puts on this big production and they introduce the Wii and everybody in the audience is going, Wii, 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 Wii! <laughs> and they obviously thought it wasn't going to make it, but Wii changed the world because it showed you could have one, more than one market. But also, Nokia came out with the games. So it was, we didn't even have the Apple iPhone yet, if you can only imagine. Now most games are played on the Apple iPhone or iPad. And in China, it's, which, is, um, which is supposed to be one of the biggest game um, audiences in the world, that's all they play. And they figured out a different way to monetize it that wouldn't quite work the same in the US. So my next thing is play, but don't get too attached. Remember to be flexible. You could also say learn, but don't get too attached. Know that you're gonna change your jobs probably every three to five years. And you might even totally flip them around. When I started, I was a fine artist, and then I was a computer geek, and an animator, and a, finally a professor. It goes around and around. So also, uh, this is my dad, and that's me. <laughs> And I'm pretty lucky because um, my dad had this job, which I hated to explain it when I was a kid, because he was a future forecaster in value analysis. Do you think any 12-year-old knew what I was talking about? My dad was not an engineer. My dad was not, uh, uh, um, he, he wasn't working at the railroad. He wasn't a teacher or a policeman. He was a future forecaster in value analysis. And what that means is he was, we call him a futurist, and he was a futurist for Eastman Kodak Company. And so I grew up around technology. And in 2002, my father sent me this. Video gaming, $9.3 billion market. And dad wrote a little note in his handwriting and said, Champlain should have a degree like this. And I said, you know, 
that's what those students of mine are saying. So my next thing is identify someone who believes in you. And if I'd like you all to just take a second for yourselves, I'm gonna give you a minute, and I want you to think of that person you know who believes in you. So finally, I said, okay, this is a really good idea for Champlain. It fits Champlain in a lot of ways. We're small, we're connected. At the time, we had a business division. Games was started in the gate and business division. But the thing about it was is that uh, we had this huge multimedia and graphic design um, degree in it. So we had business and aesthetics and media and technology all in one. We had an incredible ITS division. Um, which was known for um, a lot of their programs at the time. And uh, we also had um, education. And education, I thought, was key to um, part of this. So I said, you know, this fits. So I went to Roger Perry. He used to um, go around the campus. He'd sometimes plop down in a chair unexpectedly. And he'd kind of check on you. And, and I, he's, I, he came in my office one day, and I said, Roger, I have this idea. And he said, well, let's go to lunch. And he took me to his club. And I was like, wow, Roger, I have this great idea, but I really have no time. And he liked the idea. And I knew that um, as long as he thought it fit the college, then it was probably something I could go for. But the fight, it was a, a big fight after that. So um, the other thing he did was he introduced me to um, a person who became my mentor, who founded um, Boston Scientific and also the FIRST Robotics. I just came back from FIRST two weekends ago where you get to see these students, these young people creating the next future you know, of, of technology. Um, and so with these two, I think um, I then went to GDC. Michelle Miller was our VP then, and she gave me special permission to go to GDC. GDC at the time, is, it's a game developers conference. It had 5,000 attendees that year. Now, this year, it had over 20,000 attendees. And so at GDC, I got to know all these different people in the industry, and so I called them in to be my advisory panel. So the next um, piece I'd like to share with you is find your Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think that's really important. I think you gotta find someone who can help you grow and who can mentor you and can point out new things. In fact, find a dozen of them. I think in the long run, that's uh, something that can help you. I brought these guys. Woohoo! Peter's in the audience today. He, Peter was a colleague of mine back in business. He probably remembers this. So we put the curriculum together, which was a lot of work. Um, and then um, we brought it to the division to get passed. And the division did not like this idea at all. They said, what, a game degree? You've got to be crazy. You're insane. And it took about four meetings before it passed. And this is what did it. Two things did it. One, uh, another uh, professor at the college, since Benino, had this picture from her grandparents' house. And it had the TV and the radio and telephone all in one corner. And I said, this was the technology corner of the house. What does your house look like now? And then I showed him our little friends here. And I said, this is the toys that we all grew up with. And then I showed him this. This was a, a hit little thing at the time. Oh, you guys recognize it, see? <laughs> Neopets, and look at it. It's got a book, so you can read. But it's also got this little plastic game, so you can play. But then it's got another little game inside. And guess what? You could go on the web and play some more. And I said, look, at this is what we grew up with. It's what our, this new generation's growing up with. We need to have a degree for them, for their future. And that's what passed division. And it was a, still another fight <laughs> for another lot of rounds to, through the process. But in the end, everybody um, passed it. It only uh, it had one dissenting vote. And, uh, and so there I am. That's our new uh, program. And as Amanda said, that was a long time ago. I look so young, it's a little shameful. And, and now here we are, uh, and here you are. 
And it's all because of the college. And then I went on and started the EMC, which I know there's a lot of EMC alumni in here, uh, to support the program so that uh, students could get working, um, they could actually work on games for a different purpose, for real clients. And then I went on to create the uh, MFA and now the Shanghai program. So the next thing I think it's really important to know how to negotiate and also how to iterate. Uh, I know you know that iteration from um, your own degree program, but negotiation is really important too. So then we've gone on together um, with the game faculty. A lot of the game faculty have worked on a lot of these projects with us. So we've worked with the United Nations. Um, we've created games for children with cystic fibrosis that have been shown to improve their lung capacity. We've worked with ECHO. We're now working um, here um, with virtual reality glasses. And um, with Amanda and some of the faculty here, we're doing another game addressing uh, sexual harassment on campus. And in the near future, this, these are things that you might be working on. First of all, everybody talks about big data, but it's really visualization that's going to help us solve it. Because numbers are numbers, but you need to see a picture. You need to understand visually. There's also, uh, we're going to grow next-gen mobile computing. It's just the start. The Internet of Things will change how consumers uh, in enterprises use technology. You can see it already. Uh, I always, I love my Garmin. I love to track everything I do. And the trackers on cars, when I was in China, there was an entrepreneur and he had this device that you plugged into your car and it co connected to an app and recorded all your data. And you could use it to get a discount on your um, insurance. And he was also looking how you could gamify it so you could get re rewards for gas and all sorts of things. Public interactive displays will become more common. They were all over Shanghai, and I would just stop and play with every single one I came to. It was just fun, but I think there's going to be more. There's going to be a purpose and meaning behind these displays. 3D printing, of course, and we have our Maker Lab, and I'm really excited. At first, I saw them um, putting, uh, creating um, parts of the robots with 3D printers. And my husband, Jim, who's an a engineer in visualization, he's been making cameras, printing out uh, 3D pieces for them. There's going to be more co-working entrepreneurialism. I think that's, uh, we can't deny it. There's going to be more and more st startups. They're going to burn out fast, but they're also going to succeed and they're going to start new things. And game thinking is going to infuse everything. I uh, had to give a talk two weeks ago, and on the way down, I got hungry, so I went to McDonald's. And McDonald's has this thing, and you get your little, uh, you can get your Happy Meal toy, which is actually a reward system, and then you can go online and you can download their game, and it keeps you engaged in their company. Also, my little thing here tells me how many steps, and I know I'm beating my te daughter Tegan over there on steps. I think her Garmin broke. <laughs> so, in order to do all of these things, to launch degrees and to create products, I think you have to find comrades. You've got to bring them on, and you have to take on those really big challenges. I believe in this generation's ability to solve really big problems. And then the last thing I'd like to say, this is a picture from GDC where the uh, advancement had our um, party with our alumni. And these, I believe, are um, two, I, I, don't, I forget the year. Actually, you can see there's Brenna in the front. She was the GIV student in one of the first pictures. There she is. <laughs> she grew up a little. <laughs> and they were all celebrating because guess what? They're all in industry. They're at Apple, and then they're at Sony, and then they're at Google, and then they're at uh, Ubisoft and Eidos, and they're at, at their own companies. Uh, so the thing I'd like to say, the last thing I'd like to say is celebrate. And I'd also like to say give thanks. Give thanks that you got here. Give thanks to the people who helped you get here. And give thanks for the opportunities that you're going to find along the way. But do remember to celebrate. Pause and celebrate and take stock of how far you've come. And that's it. <laughs>